<laughs> okay. Uh, I, I'm Kurt. I'm going to give a talk about validating structured inputs, and I made up two new words: template schemas and language native schemas. And I think you'll you'll hopefully agree by the end of the talk that this this is uh, justified new words, and uh, they're really cool, and we should use these more. So first, uh, what, what's left in the talk? First, we're going to start with the bitter salad of the current situation of trying to validate structured data. Then we're going to move on to sort of an ideal soup of what we imagine a perfect solution might look like. Then we're going to move on to the main course of how we can actually achieve this. And then for dessert, we're going to have some sweet use cases and a Q&A. So first, the, the, the current problem. Let's say we have a, a structured message, something like this, and you want to write a specification that will uh, encapsulate this. You don't have to worry about your code dealing with uh, bad inputs. The first thing that may come to mind is something like JSON schema. The problem with JSON schema is that you know you end up with something like this, and it only gets worse and worse as the size of your, your messages get larger. So in practice, what actually happens is you actually do something like this, and maybe you feel a little bit guilty that you didn't validate your input, but you kind of cross your fingers, hope for the best, maybe you get a value error, maybe you get a type error, maybe you silently ignore uh, bad data. But if only it was easier to write the schemas, we'd rewrite them more. So ideally, we'd like something that looks kind of like this, right? You, you, you just want to say that, that uh, you want a, a, a simple uh, schema that looks pretty much like the message that you're validating instead of, instead of uh, being huge and complicated. And basically the idea is that um, when, you're, when you're looking at this, you can kind of eyeball it and get a pretty good idea of what it's going to validate. Um, so you may say that this, this isn't a fair example because that JSON schema was actually doing a lot more work than this little simple schema. But really that whole like uh, three, three column JSON schema, this was all the extra uh, validation it was applying to its values. So this encapsulates the exact same level of validation as that JSON schema does. But I think you'll agree like much, much more smaller and readable. Um, so uh, the, the other thing that we'd like is uh, we want the, the, the schema to be like a native data structure in the line. So for example, if you need to do something like recursive, you look at a uh, uh, JSON schema, not to tick on JSON schema, but uh, uh, it's just an example people are probably familiar with. Uh, you have to make IDs and stuff to achieve recursion. In, in this example, uh, we want to represent uh, directories and files uh, with some kind of a schema where we just say, okay, uh, a directory is a dictionary uh, with uh, string keys and it contain files, which are strings or subdirectories, which are uh, you know, sub-dictionaries with, with uh, substreams. And we can represent that by simply making a recursive data structure in Python. Um, and you get a lot of other, other benefits too. It's, it's, uh, it's easier to integrate with other libraries. Uh, it's easier to manipulate your schemes. You say, if only such a library existed. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, luckily, uh, such a library does exist. It's called schema. So, so, so all those uh, examples that we're looking at are, are, are valid uh, schemas using the schema library. And there's, uh, there's basically four key rules that you can use to write uh, valid schemas. There's uh, uh, values match themselves, containers will recurse downwards, types will match instances of that type, and callables will be evaluated as predicates. So the first very simple rule, uh, uh, a schema of some constant will simply check that the, the validating expression is equal to that constant. So like schema of one, you know, validates uh, one. Uh, so containers for list tuples and sets, uh, a, a uh, container containing the schema will check that that subschema validates each of the items in that list, set, or tuple. For dictionaries, the key end value can be a schema. And it will, it will simply uh, recurse downwards and apply the subschema to all the keys and all the, all the values. Uh, for types, uh, uh, type match instances, so we already saw some examples of that, like str and int. It's uh, pretty intuitive. And uh, callables are evaluated as predicates. So this means anytime you put a callable in as a schema, uh, it will be called with the current value. And if it returns true, that means it validates. If it returns anything uh, not true, being or raises an exception, that means it doesn't doesn't value. Uh, there's a couple other uh, utility things. Uh, there's an and conjoinment, which is you can take two schemas and uh, uh, apply both of them to the same data. There's or you can apply either. And there's use, which lets you transform a value as it's being validated. Uh, 
Also, error messages are, are very nice in the trunk version of the code. This isn't uh, quite released yet. We have an open GitHub issue. If you guys want to go uh, thumbs up it, maybe we can get them to do a release in 2017. OK. And, and uh, so for dessert, we've got some sweet use cases. Uh, so you can see uh, how, how smooth it is to use this library. So, so this is a nice, uh, nice example, I think. So, so we have a string that represents a path on the disk. And we want to be able to, uh, to take a tilde path and expand it into a, a, an absolute path. And then we want to check that the path actually exists. And we want, want to do that all in the validation layer so that our code doesn't have to worry about you know, trying to open a file that doesn't exist. And the, the nice thing is uh, there's tons of things in the standard library that are already predicates. So you can just drop them straight into your schemas. And uh, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's this example. Um, uh, another example of, uh, of smooth integration, there's this other library out there called uh, Adders. And what it basically does is it gives you sort of uh, declarative objects where you uh, uh, describe uh, the fields of your object and it auto-generates uh, init and a wrapper and uh, uh, equal operator, uh, some, some utility things like that. So we can integrate uh, schema and actor together. And in addition to declaring your fields, you can also declare the schema of your fields. So this is just the code to do that. Uh, and we, we make this uh, schema adder uh, factory. And then we can do stuff like this. So we can sort of declaratively, uh, so this is, this is from some code that we use. This is representing a, a Docker image. But the main thing just to see is that you can, you can uh, have these uh, schemas applied to the inputs to your constructor. Uh, and you don't have to worry inside your class about um, uh, dealing with invalid data. Another example, uh, it's really easy to write helper functions. So let's say, for example, you have some port. You, you can take the port input as a string and uh, convert it to an integer uh, with, with this, this kind of helper function. Another example, you might want to assert that a port is inside the uh, valid range. Uh, for example, uh, Python standard library does some bad things if you give it an integer that's outside the range of uh, valid ports. Uh, and last example, uh, this is another one from, from our code. You, you may have some, some configuration file that lets you specify a Git remote, but what if you type up a Git remote? For example, is it a colon or a slash? Off the top of your head, is it a colon or a slash when it's HTTP or when it's Git for the, for the uh, a Git remote? Um, and, and this will kind of uh, validate that uh, so that instead of uh, getting a, a Git throwing, throwing some weird error uh, way downstream, you can validate it right and parse the configuration file. Um, and uh, that's the presentation. Uh, this schema's uh, hit install schema. Um, I hope, hope you guys use it. So, this, first of all, I'd like to comment that that regex is an example of why hyperlink is really important. <laughs> um, because Machmo put a ton of work into getting the schemas right. Um, which is really, really nice. And then the second question, I, I was a question. My actual question is, um, <laughs> what about voluptuous? The reason, because like scheme, the schema, if there are multiple um, errors in the schema, mm -hmm. does schema, the library, like raise an exception for on the first error, or does it like record multiple errors and tell you all ones? Because voluptuous does that. I think it's the only library that I know of that does that. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, the main advantage of schema is there's a lot of libraries in the space. The main advantage of schema is the terseness of the schema definition. Mm -hmm. And the idea is there's use cases where you're not going to mm -hmm. actually take the time to write anything. So okay. say, like, the, the, main, the main competition to schema is not you know, based I, on schema or anything else. The main competition is, is this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, let, let's, let's do something, at least. Mm -hmm. OK. Well, what about network messages? Uh, network messages, schema is probably not the best tool. Um, for, for one thing, you probably don't want a language-specific network message. You want something that's going to be, uh, be cross-language. And for other thing, uh, network messages, is, is, is there's already a lot of tools in that area. There's much less tools in the area of saying, like, I've got some you know, semi-structured data coming out of a configuration file or something like this. Else I don't want to keep asking. <laughs> no, you're do you, good. Do you, have a, like a, is, do you have any solution for serialization for the other going the other direction? Oh, oh uh, you mean checking that your output is structured? Right. Or is it, is it schema? I don't think it's not bi directional, but like it would be nice to, like, I know Adder says asdict, which mm -hmm. lets you emit the dictionary. Is that, do you just like, based on some as it go from there? Do you have any, any, any suggestions for how to 
deal with okay. egress of the data, not just the egress. Yeah, yeah. Well, well it's interesting. If, if you combine it with adders, um, you can get a nice property of, so one, one, uh, uh, one problem with adders as it is that you lose all the type information, mm -hmm. so you can no longer like bidirectional. If you, uh, if you, uh, you can construct the, the use keyboard, um, mm -hmm. uh, and thereby you can, you can wire up a type to a field using a schema adder. And now you can get bidirectional, you can get as it, and then you can reconstruct it back from the dictionary. And so that's maybe an interesting possibility to uh, to to get. Uh, yeah. But but I think I think it you need um, you need some kind of declarative structure like adder before it really makes sense because schema yeah. is just in the business of, of, of validating the data structure. So sure, you make, you know send me a giant dictionary, and I can validate it again before I write a disk. But you probably don't want to write a bunch of code assembling a, a giant dictionary. Oh, yeah, if you have multiple fields of data structure you want to value across several things, can you do that? Um, you have multiple fields of data So you have contain bar and baz, and you care about the group bar and baz together as opposed to separate. Oh, yes, absolutely. So, so, so the, the, the generally the way that you combine, uh, if, you, if you have conditions that, that sort of work together, like you say, you want to say, hey, I want to check that foo is equal to bar. Mm -hmm. For example, but I don't care which values foo and bar have. The way you can uh, uh, you can basically achieve that uh, via via lambdas at a higher level. So um, I'm not sure if this is if this is uh, your your use case. So let, let's say let's say you uh, You say we've got foo and it has some some value, and we have a, a bar and it has some value. And I don't care what the values are, but I care that they're equal. Is, is that is that sort of the way? Sure. So so what you can do is say Okay, and then we can uh, So the, 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 there we go. We achieve that kind of a thing. And you just, the, the, the nice thing is that you have this lambda is sort of like an escape valve. So the answer to anything you can dream of is, is like yes, you can do it with with enough lambda, uh, you know, with enough lambda hammer. You can. <laughs> <laughs> in these cases, so we use this for our configuration validation. Um, in these cases, I recommend using like a named function because uh, basically, as users are going to write more configs. Uh, like they don't want to see that lambda failed on that value, right? They want to see okay. that like you know who equals var failed. On that yeah, that's a good thing too. So so like the, it also I think it does a pretty tasteful thing on the error messages. It tells you whether the function name, which would be better to use your own function name, it tells you the arguments that function got passed and it should evaluate the truth. So you kind of uh, easy to do that. All right. Thank, thank you very much for your time.